Mojang just released the final features for Minecraft 1.21, and they don't disappoint. We have so many updates. The Mace just got a huge overhaul with new enchantments, and it's even more powerful now. Trial Chambers have a completely new experience and new loot. They've completely changed raid farms for all platforms forever. There's new potions and so much more. Let's dive in. And you heard me right. These are the final features for Minecraft 1.21. We still don't know the name of the update, so let me know your suggestions down below for that. We might see one or two more features sneak into the update, but the major stuff is all here now. We have so much to cover in this video, but first of all, the mace has gotten a huge amount of upgrades, as you can see from all these enchantments right here. Uh, let's talk about it. So first of all, we can go ahead and put this thing in the enchantment table, and you're going to see a couple of interesting things. First of all, we can now put unbreaking on it, pretty normal. You can put fire aspect on it, and we have a new density enchantment that increases damage. So if we just enchant this thing with unbreaking, Ranking three, we're gonna get Wind Burst three and Density four. Actually, a really good enchantment. So let's put this thing into the anvil real quick, and you'll see that we're now able to enchant it with Mending, which solves our durability issues. And of course, you can also put Unbreaking on it as well. We fully expected this to happen. It just wasn't quite ready for it in the previous snapshots that we've seen. Now, surprisingly, you can also put Fire Aspect on the Mace as well, which is really, really nice. That way you can light mobs on fire. However, you cannot put Knockback on it or channeling, which I am just, I'm so sad. So, so sad. Imagine you hit something, it gets lit on fire and struck by lightning. I mean, come on, that would be so good. Interestingly, we can put a couple of damage enchantments on the mace. So we can now put Bane of Arthropods on the mace. So useful, yay, wow, amazing. We can also put Smite on the mace as well. As you can see, that does properly work. However, we can't put Sharpness on there. And I imagine that's because we have the new density enchantment. And in case you're wondering, you cannot put looting on the mace and you cannot put sweeping edge on it either. So those are all the basic mace enchantments that you might be expecting to have. However, we also have three new ones that are specific to just the mace. There is density, which has five different levels and this increases damage. There's also wind burst that has three different levels. This will launch you up into the air after a successful hit and give more knockback to mobs around you. And there's also a breach that has three different levels and this helps bypass armor and deal directly direct damage to whatever you're attacking. Let's check out all these enchantments real quick. So the density enchantment deals more damage to a mob if you have a falling smash attack on it. So if you just like hit it regularly or do a little crit, it's not going to increase your damage. But if you do a falling attack, that's when it's going to significantly help you. So now we can kill a fresh warden from a 45 block drop with a regular mace. You need significantly more height to be able to kill it. To show you the power of a density five mace, let's try this guy on a Ravager. So this is a regular mace and we need a 22 block fall to be able to one hit kill this guy as you can see. However, if you're using a density 5 mace, you only need an 8 block drop to one hit kill a Ravager. Absolutely insane. That is a huge difference. A massive increase in damage dealt using density 5. If you thought this thing was overpowered before, it is way more overpowered now. So you know how Mojang suggested that we use the wind charge and the mace to get a little bit of a combo and that will knock back all your guys. Well, we can do that with just an enchantment now and that is the wind burst enchantment. So this is the wind charge mace. We're going to do a little jump and as you can see, it's going to launch us into the air, which allows us to do combos. And that was a really Really cool particle effect. Did you see that? There was dirt everywhere. This is absolutely like a Hulk smash attack. Now, if you have enough enemies, you can really do a combo with this. So if you fall from high enough to actually do like a full smash attack, as you can see, then you're going to get all those dirt particles in general. You can be at the same level as someone and still get a little bit of knockback and a combo effect from it. As you can see, all you got to do is jump and do a crit and then bam, you could do this whole thing. That is amazing. Ah, oh, man, I love this so much. And by the way, Wind Burst launches you into the air even if you don't jump. So any hit that you land will launch you into the air and allow you to do a crit on these guys as you can see. So let's try this with just a regular mace. We're just going to fall and hit this guy right here. And as you can see, that really did a lot more knockback. That is way more than the previous snapshot that we saw. And let's see if we can try that again with the Wind Charge enchantment. So we get a double jump and then we do it again. Wow, that can really send guys flying. It's going to be difficult to get a double 
impact though because it has so much knockback. So you're going to want a high density of enemies in the area, uh, which is going to become very low density very quickly. And the final enchantment for the mace is the breach enchantment, which basically bypasses and penetrates armor. Now, this is going to be mostly useful for players. Now, there's not a great way for me to test this, but we're just going to do a crit on this guy and see what happens. Nine full crits if you want to kill that netherite guy. That was all protection for. This zombie right here has the same armor, but we're going to go ahead and do a falling attack on this guy. And as you can see, it'll take only a couple of attacks. So that took four attacks with just a two block drop right there compared to nine regular attacks using breach. Now, again, this isn't like the best demonstration because it's supposed to bypass armor and like damage the player and stuff. You might be wondering if you're limited to only one of these new and mace enchantments and I can happily tell you that you can have all of them on the same mace in vanilla survival and you can even add on the other things as well like mending or unbreaking smite and even fire aspect so none of them are unique like how mending and infinity can't be on a bow you can have absolutely all of them but they do get pretty expensive so you're gonna have to worry about anvil cost and durability and stuff so that's everything new with the mace but we have so much to cover in this video let's get to it there's been a big change to how you activate raids in minecraft so normally you would just kill one of these guys and that'll give you the bad almond effect if you wanted to get rid of it then you'd have to drink milk but now it's going to be a bit different so when you kill this guy it is actually going to drop yourself this little ominous bottle right here that's actually what it's called ominous bottle and as you can see that's going to give us a bad omen too now if we drink this as you can see it's going to give us a slightly new effect in the upper right there you can see it's very creepy and dark looking i like it and it's got this new icon here as well if we look in the creative inventory you can see there are five different levels of this there is the regular one level two three four and five so you can still get the more difficult raids on java edition hopefully we also get these on bedrock edition but that would require a little bit of an overhaul to the raid mechanics of bedrock which we're kind of already getting i'll talk about that more in a minute there's a new sound and effect when you drink the ominous bottle as you can see, incredibly cool. Because we're in a village that is transformed into Raid Omen, and now it's going to take 30 seconds for that raid to start, and it's going to start wherever you gained the Raid Omen effect. So it should start over here, for example. This gives you time to move away and prepare and get ready for that raid to happen. And as you can see, once that effect runs out, then the raid is going to begin. Now, on Java Edition, you get more guys with banners. So if we go ahead and kill that guy... Uh, we're not actually going to get a bottle from him, as you can see there, which is going to be a problem for Java raid farms. That's that's a rough thing right there. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll talk more about that later. Also, a little note here about these ominous bottles. You can't even put them into a brewing stand, so we're not going to be able to increase the level of these to get stronger raids or turn them into splash potions. You have to manually drink these in order to get more bad omen or ominous effect. Oof. So besides the raid changes, we also have some big changes to how you can fight trial chambers. So normally you can walk in here in survival mode and it's going to be a regular trial chamber with all the things that we already know about. But if you drink one of these ominous bottles before you come in here, things are going to get a lot more intense. So let's go ahead and drink a level one default and that's going to give us a bad omen as you can see here. So when you walk into a trial chamber with the bad omen effect, it's not going to immediately trigger or do anything unlike a raid. You have to actually get close to one of the trial spawners and as you can see we got some really cool effects there yo what these guys are spawning with diamond armor they got trims on them uh this place is getting serious all of a sudden so i would recommend that you go ahead and only activate one spawner at a time i love that they have armor trims on them and let's use the mace get out of here guys you need to not be existing right now thank you very much so as you can see the mobs are going to spawn with armor on them they're going to be more difficult and there should be more of them and this is just a regular level one bad omen as well now you might have noticed it there but we're actually having potions summoned above us and lingering potions too as you can see there which is really unique so this one is going to summon right here and drop down 
so cool. Now you're actually gonna get new cursed items from this little snapshot as well. As you can see, these arrows don't stack together. So if you like collecting cursed things, now is your time to get those. When you activate the trial spawners with the bad omen, they're gonna turn into these ominous spawners. And as you see, the effect actually turns into trial omen, again, with a really cool little icon. Now you have a small chance of getting an ominous trial key from this place. And this is gonna plug you into the ominous vaults, which will give you even better loot. So it's higher risk, but higher reward. And man, I didn't know I liked acupuncture so much, but this feels great. So as you can see, this was an ominous spawner, and that one just gave me the little bottle, and this one just gave me potatoes! I love to see it. So this one right here is just a regular trial vault that you'll be able to unlock with a regular key. However, this one up here is an ominous vault, and this one can only be unlocked with the ominous key. And as you can see, really cool animation there. And these ones are going to be a little bit harder to find. They're going to be sprinkled around the place a little bit less common than the regular vaults. So if we try and click on this with a regular key, it doesn't do anything. As you can see there, it just makes a little sound. But if we click on that with an ominous trial key, that is when we start getting it to unlock. And as you can see, we're getting the little ominous effect. We're getting some diamond armor and some other loot. So we just got a diamond chest plate from that, some slowness arrows, and nine wind charges. And a bad omen level five. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're gonna have to try th that out and see what happens. So interestingly, you can't pick block these ominous vaults. If you try and do that, you just get a regular vault block, which is a bit strange, but you can copy them using structure blocks. So as you see, I got a whole lineup of them and we're gonna see what kind of loot we get from these guys. Immediately, you can see that the loot is actually pretty good. We're getting wind charges, golden apples. We're getting the armor trams, heavy cores, more golden apples, armor trams, and diamonds, diamond blocks. Now, like regular vault blocks, these can be used infinitely by any number of players, but each player can only use it one time. So now that I've unlocked it, that's the only time I will ever be able to unlock it. But another player could come in, use an ominous key, and unlock these to get more loot. So I think what needs to happen is we need to drink a level 5 battle. Bad Omen, and then go ahead and activate this place. Now, as you can see, you can have Bad Omen and Trial Omen at the same time. The Trial Chambers do still have the issue of all the mobs fighting each other and just kind of killing themselves for you, which is, you know, kind of low-key convenient. Also, there can be lingering speed potions that drop over the spawner, so these guys can spawn with effects, and that's actually kind of cool. They're gonna get the speed effect. I imagine there's other effects as well, maybe strength or resistance that they can get from these lingering potions. Really neat. So I just went ahead and drank a Bad Omen 5 at a fresh Trial Chamber. That way we didn't have the, you know, ominous effect from this. And now if we go ahead and activate this, we should see significantly more difficult mobs spawn. Oh, they're all baby zombies. Oh, lovely. Fantastic. This is absolutely great. I hate everything about this. Yeah, not good. Oh, great. Now they caught me on fire. That was really smart. Yeah. Congratulations. I played myself. Uh, yeah. So, oh, we're getting spider webs around the place. This is not what you want. Okay. Well played, Mojang. Well played. I, I like it quite a bit. I think the loot tables of the ominous spawners still need to be upgraded a little bit because all I got from that was potatoes and bread. You know, appreciated, but not exactly what I came here for. The loot table for the regular vaults and the trial chambers has also been changed. So when you unlock these with a regular trial key, you have a chance of still getting the guster banner pattern, the bolt armor trim, and instead of the heavy core, you have a very rare chance of getting a trident from it, which seems a bit weird to have here, but whatever. We'll let it slide for now. Now, items have also been removed from the regular vault. You'll no longer get the heavy core, the flow banner pattern, or the flow armor trim from these regular vaults. You're now going to have to use the ominous vaults to get these items. You can get ominous bottles one and two from this little vault right here. And of course, the ominous vaults up here can give you ominous level three, four, and five. So it appears that this is like a significant thing that they've gone through and added to Java edition. So hopefully we'll also see these levels added to Bedrock edition to give us more intense raids. There's also been a nice change to the trial spawners. These things will only activate if they have line of sight to the player. So if you're behind a wall or or on the outside of the trial chamber, you're not going to accidentally activate all these things. They have to be able to see you. Mojang has also added four new types of potions in this update, all of which you can brew and acquire in survival mode, and all of which you will encounter in the trial chambers, I believe, if you have the ominous effect. So first up, we have the potion of oozing, and then there is the potion of wind charge, potion of weaving, and potion of infestation. So the potion of wind charge is simply a nether wart and then a breeze rod, 
and that is going to give you the potion of wind charging and of course you can you know make those splash or lingering if you want to the potion of weaving is just another wart and a cobweb and then the oozing one is nether wart again with a slime block and that will give you the oozing potions and infestation is nether wart and stone block and that will give you infestation now as you can see there are regular lingering and splash versions of all of these new potion types so let's take a look at all these potion effects these are generally all a bad thing you you probably don't want any of these so the wind charging effect is going to make mobs explode into a puff of air when they die and of course then i'll give knock back to everything in the area potion of oozing is also fun because when this guy dies he's going to spawn two slimes and this is actually pretty cool so you can get extra slime out of your farms now if you simply make one of these potions now hold up we gotta splash this guy with a potion of oozing and then when we kill him ah uh, he doesn't spawn any more slimes that is so illegal no i want a baby slime to give me more larger slimes that just seems very cursed and i think it would be a great thing okay what about this guy he, he's a he's a normal one the babies, they don't spread it. Ah, oh, so sad. Potion of Weaving is also interesting. So when you splash these guys, they'll be able to move through cobwebs at regular speeds. However, it doesn't appear to be fully working for these guys. Uh, either way, when you kill them, they're going to spawn a cobweb or a couple on death, which is actually pretty cool. I, I really like that. Now, I think this would be really cool to add to the, the cave spiders and the mine shafts. And then there's Potion of Infestation. Mobs with this effect have a 5% chance of summoning a silverfish every time that they are hurt, which is actually pretty cool. As you can see, there we go. We got three silverfish out of that guy. And this is going to be so fun for all map makers everywhere. We're going to have just way too much fun. And can I just say, I love that we can also get these in survival mode as well. This is going to make decked out way more interesting. And let's talk about raid farms, everyone's favorite thing. So these are going to be changing a little bit or possibly entirely depending on the the final implementation of the ominous potion to give you a recap of how these things currently work on a bedrock edition you need to kill the raid captain which will give you bad omen allowing you to start a raid now that's normal for java edition 2 but you get more bad omen just from doing more raids it's actually really nice and we never got that on bedrock anyway so you need an outpost on a bedrock edition to kill that captain give you the bad omen you start the raid up here you kill all the raiders and that's basically it you just repeat that cycle over and over again now because there's no splash potions for ominous we're going to have to take the potion from the captain send it up to the player and then manually drink that to start a new raid so afk raid farms are broken with this change since we don't have the offhand there might be a little bit of a workaround as long as you don't hold a looting sword maybe you could set up an auto clicker to auto drink the potions but then you wouldn't get looting now technically with this change we can just make a little update to all of our existing raid farms because we just need to add in a little potion sorter down here a bubble elevator to send them up to the player and then if you don't want to afk that's all the changes you would need we'll see what the final changes are and we still have a ways to go before 121 is released so we got time to prepare either way so with these changes minecraft 1.21 is essentially complete they've added all the things that they plan to add as you can see from this little thing right here and it's been confirmed by the devs that these are the final features for 121 now that doesn't mean that we won't see a couple extra things sneak in here or there or some tweaks or changes or whatnot i'm still hoping to see channeling on the mace man i'm holding out hope but if you want to see more minecraft news when it releases then make sure to subscribe thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys down in the comments and in the next one